Measure the resistivity of a metallic conductor. Uh, formulas on the board, gentlemen at the back, keep it quiet please. Length of wire, in this case the wire I have is called constantin, and I just want to measure the resistivity of it. So from the formula, which is up on the board, if you can see it up there while I tighten this up, formula for resistance is R is rho L over A, where rho is resistivity. We're looking to find resistivity, so we cross multiply, so say rho would be R, which is resistance, multiplied by A, divided by L. Back to me, we're looking at the wire. So here's a length of constant in wire. Uh, I've got to straighten it out, I've got to measure the resistance of it, and I've got to measure the length of it. So in theory, it's fairly straightforward. I pull it tight so that there are no kinks in it, and I tighten it up like that. So now really, all I've got to do is take two measurements. I need to measure resistance, and I need to measure length. To measure resistance, there's one precaution I should take into account first, and that's the resistance of these leads. So to do that, I'll short circuit two of these guys together, and I have to hold them fairly tight, and I'll get a resistance of, it looks like 0.6, and if I make firm contact, it goes down to 0.5. So my resistance of the leads is 0.5. So when I'm taking a measurement for the wire here, I must subtract 0.5 from it. So all I've got to do is take any two points I want. And I have set it up in such a way that it makes it nice and easy to measure the length. And the resistance corresponds to the distance between the two points. So if I put one pointer here at 90 and the other one at, I took on the board a length of 0.9 which is something I should have taken into account beforehand. So if that's 95 and that's 15, that's 0.8. So I need 95 and 5, which I'm over here somewhere. So I'm at the other side of the uh, clamp, but it should still be approximately right. We just want to get the method. So 95 and 5 has gives me a length of 0.9 meters, and my resistance is 2.2 ohms. And 2.2 ohms... I had a resistance of 0.5, so I must take 0.5 away from the 2.2, and I will get 1.7, yes? So I have a resistance of 1.7 and a length of 0.9 centimeters. At that stage, there's not too much else left to do except stick it into my formula, except before I do that, there's one other thing I needed to measure, and that's the diameter. Two ways of measuring diameter. You can see this, Jonathan? Yeah. This is known as a what? Micrometer. Micrometer screw gauge. And to work that out is quite tricky, it's quite finicky, it's also relatively expensive. So from little, you can replace those guys with these guys, which is just the digital calipers. So to measure the diameter, you want to take a diameter at a couple of different points. I turn it on, make sure it's zeroed. When I go back to zero, so it's zero. I take it at a couple of different points to get an average, because this is drawn out in the manufacturing process, and it's not going to be perfect. So, nice and quickly. I don't know whether or not you can zoom in on that, but you got 0.57 there? Yeah. Okay, so very quickly, I've done this in a couple of different places, and I got an average of 0.56, I think I got my, my measurement. So an average diameter of 0.6, my length was 0.9, and my resistance was 1.7. So at that stage, all you've got to do is come back and stick it into the formula. Basic formula for resistance, cross multiply to get resistivity. The area is going to be the cross-sectional area of the wire, which is pi r squared. So now all I'm looking for is a value for resistance, a value for the radius of the wire, and a value for the length. The radius of the wire, I measured the diameter, an average diameter is 0.56, so this radius will be half that, which is 2.8 by 10 to the minus 4. So now I take the three values, I sub them into my formula, so rho is equal to r, a over l, work it all out, and I get 4.65 by 10 to the minus 7 units per one meter. Okay? A couple of quick points to go back over that. If you're looking for precautions or sources of error, you should make sure that this is taut. You should make sure there are no kinks in it. Make sure you zero the leads so you take that resistance away from your overall amount. And then by using a digital calipers, it makes the measuring of the diameter that much easier. In fact, this came up in a couple of years ago in the exam papers. So if I got through it pretty quickly, uh, describe, if I can find it, question two, question three. The question was, name an instrument to measure the diameter of the wire and describe how it is used. So if you had set a micrometer screw gauge to describe how to measure a micrometer screw gauge, Sarah Trace, can you keep it quiet back there at the back, please? To figure out how to describe this, you're talking at least half a page, and it gets quite tricky. Whereas all you had to say for something like this, they were given three marks for identifying it as a digital vernier calipers. All you had to say was you place the wire between the jaws for three marks, close and tighten the jaws for three marks, and read the scale for three marks. So from now on, that's all you've got to do.
talk about how you're measuring the wire. Um, any precautions we've gone over, using a diamond calculate the value we've gone through all of that, so that's pretty much all there is. Thank you, gentlemen. You're done. Yeah. This is an important